them to BSL Season 16 Hasu League Round of 16 Group D opening matches between Arson and Ninpo. Bottom left hand qual uh, <laughs> reading chat simultaneously. There's a bunch of tea puns running around because they just grabbed some tea. Bottom left hand corner, we have Arson as the yellow turn. Bottom right hand corner, we have Ninpo starting as the blue Zerg. Talking about tea brands you could make, you could make quality. It's asking a friend of the channel, Optimator, if uh, he minded if I linked to his tea store because he hooked me up with a good amount of tea. More tea than I know what to do with. Good tea without the teasing and dishing too much tea. Both players wondering about the uh, turn rate. So keep in mind, both these guys are probably playing in a decent amount of lag. Also, out in Streamland, if you guys can let me know if the audio balance is a little bit too high with the um, the uh, background noise and everything like that. Anyway, between these two guys, I, I don't know. I might favor Arson, but with the lag, sometimes it's... Easier to I, I know that Nimpo in the past has been able to pull off early Zergling floods. I feel like as things progress, because Mutalist Micro takes a hit in lag, it can uh, really affect Zerg's mid game, especially if they rely on two hatch Mutalist style of play. But in the early stages of the match, where being able to maneuver Marines just out of corners and whatnot. Having the Marines just stutter and not get shots off and whatnot can be a, a big hassle against early Floods, both against early Zerglings, early Zealots. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm not sure if I want to say it balances. I think it might be it's like it's harder for Terran in the early game because of the lag. And it can be a little bit more challenging at certain stages of the game because, by the way, we're getting a first Overlord scout for an impo into Arson's base. Looks like the initial drone scout. We'll see if that drone scout switches back around. Didn't see the corner of the SCV to be able to pull out and around. <clears throat> but should be able to see this barracks and cycle right back out. By the way, still working with a little bit of a cold. Gonna go to urgent care sooner rather than later. But Nimpo might end up in trouble. Okay, yeah, now he's getting that overlord back to the corner. But this is a high ground that Terran can walk up on. So if the Marine actually gets a move on and goes for a cutoff angle... With the second Marine, that first Overlord could get taken out. It looks like Arson not capitalizing on it. And I've actually seen multiple opportunities in these recent matches where those initial Overlords have been... Okay, now, even still, the Marine can cycle all the way back to this high ground corner, not opting to take the risk to do so. Instead, one to deny the scout, potentially. Or I'm not sure what. Anyway, Arson is going to follow it up with two Marines into expansion. It looks like we did see a 12-hatch opposite side. But small opportunities that could have sealed the game. It looks like Nimpo is going to opt for a uh, two-hatch Mutalisk opener, regardless of the lag situation. Drone that was out to scout, returning back. I do feel like this is one of those decent maps for Zergling Floods, because you do have the back door because of the map with the depleted um, assimilators and eggs that you can take out. Gas being grabbed, we're seeing a two-racks opener for Arson. Curious if he's going to go for two racks academy is pausing on additional marine construction. Maybe to get a quick looking to see if there's any hidden buildings back there. A little bit of a faster academy, so it looks like it is going to be a two racks academy opener. Quite the rush distance to apply uh, pressure early. The SCV has gotten a lot of scouting information interior to the base thus far. Zergling speed is being upgraded. And we'll see if Nimpo opts. So, so there he's dropped the spire. Let's see if he goes for the in-base third hatchery or 2.5 hatch-ish sort of thing that a lot of Zerg have favored these days. Or if he's just going to go again straight. I don't think he's going to go straight Mutalist Gall in because he hasn't tacked on that second gas. And usually that's an indicator. I do feel like there's more protected gas with Mutalist openers here. And Arson, I wasn't paying attention, moving across the minimap, noticing the lack of Zerglings on the ground. Pressing forward with an SCV. Very brave and is end up gonna, is going to end up losing all of his Marines for the cause. The SCV right there. So completely getting a blit. Wow. Sacrificing, honestly, four Marines for not a lot there. Second gas is now being tacked on for Nimpo. So maybe going to follow this up with more aggressive Mutalist play. And as I say that, he's going to go ahead and grab... 
the hatchery top right. I'm wondering if that gas was kind of as a follow-up. Two medics being tacked on, but with just five marines and two medics, it's much less of a threat. Kind of think I'm wondering what Arson was thinking in the space of that. Refusing to place down a bunker is actually just placing a supply depot and some Zerglings nearby on the hunt. Maybe seeing if they can get another marine or two. They are in smaller numbers. Engineering Bay uh, being grabbed, no third barracks. So it looks like it is going to be a dedication to three base play. The Zerglings getting pulled off the line. So two of them losing their lives for not a lot. I don't even know that this creep colony is necessary. Actually, maybe because of the lag, but with the reduced medic marine count, I don't know that there's much of a reasonable threat. And it looks like that is going to get morphed by Nimpo out on the front. Turrets being placed at that natural expansion. A factory being picked up fairly quickly to transition. We'll see if this is to go for an attempted mech bust. I have a feeling he just wants to get more rapid science vessels out on the field. Initial mutilisks taking out, but this is fairly rapid. It looks like Nimpo not having too much trouble with the lag, so it took a decent amount of damage, but was able to really get some hits to reduce that SCV line. My camera worked not the best today. Third base is up. Drones starting to be constructed to go ahead and get that third gas as well. And more mutilisks. This is going to be a good amount of mutilisks out on the field. Let's see if plus one weapons is also being researched. Looks like there are no plus one weapons or additional upgrade. <clears throat> the mutilisk staging up to the north looking for another angle. There's a, not a lot of turrets to defend back here, actually. There's only a single turret two near the barracks. So that single turret at high risk, and that could potentially open up the main. Some nice micro from Nimpo, getting several SCVs, and still racking up the kills. I gotta say, despite being in the lag condition, he is really microing well. That was some beautiful Mutalist micro all the way across. Very, very solid. I gotta say, I am impressed. That was smooth. Still has the six Mutalists up in the air, and with more joining, it's gonna be a serious threat still. Comsat being dropped from Nimpo. Oops, wrong person. There it is. Checking to see whether that protected thir uh, three o'clock base is grabbed, which it in fact was not. That's gonna be, turret does not get sh hit by the full grouping of Mutalists. The third shot does take it down. You got three very weakened Mutalists, and a two Mutalists get wiped out very, very rapidly. And so Nimpo going to have to retreat momentarily, but he is really continuing with this Mutalisk attack. Stacking it up right now is very close to having the worker lead, but rather than playing it passively, abusing this high ground edge that Arson is happy to walk up into, three additional Marines wiped out. Ninpo actually might be able to win it on Mulus alone right here. And on top of that, he does have this third gas <coughs> running, so he can go ahead and transition into mid game. His economy is actually running evenly, but he, without an additional plus one weapons or armor upgrade, he is just continuing to flood Mutalisks, feeling that he can win it on Mutalisks alone, and I don't disagree. Three turrets now placed at the natural expansion. Supply counts are in Nimpo's favor, looking to, looks like a, the weakened Mutalisks being left. <coughs> Not getting a lot out of this. He can transition back out of this. He's dropping Queen's Nest and Hydrolstem, hiding it in the upper right-hand corner, away from Arson's eyes to maybe lead him to believe that he's going for more of a Mutalisk all-in. We do have the starport that's up. A single Valkyrie has been constructed. Mine's also being upgraded, so it looks like Arson's going to utilize some of those hybrid Valkyrie builds. Mutalisk does fall to some of that splash damage, and that will alleviate a little bit of that pressure <coughs> for Arson. Ooh, Mutalisk actually taking a lot of rocket hits right there. You can see with each shot, the more Mutalisks you have, the more effective Valkyries end up becoming because of the splash. But the Medic Marine Army has been completely obliterated. There's just a few left underneath. However, seven weakened Mutalisks otherwise, but this is usually the stage of the match where Terran wants to be applying pressure to their opponent. And instead, you've got a Queen's Nest up, three gas up and running, some Hydralists under construction, Lurker being dropped, Arson dropping a bunch of comps at. I think he still must believe, although he saw the Hydralist, so he knows there's a Hydralist sent out there someplace. His front door is very vulnerable. He still hasn't added a third. Actually, it looks like he's going to try to transition to mech here. 
maybe get some vultures and mines to give himself a bit of a reprieve. Lurker's now morphing on the front for Nimpo. He's actually got an economic lead pushing up to Hive Tech. Two Valkyries are out. That with the late Marines might be enough to go ahead. So looks like the gambit here on Arson's part is, is try to have enough of a Valkyrie fleet and show enough Medic Marine that it pushes Nimpo back towards Hydralis play and then have the mech underneath it in the form of mines and whatnot and just hope that there's delayed Overlord speed potentially and that the Overlords are just going to get wiped out by the Valkyries open in open field. I don't know if that's going to overcome the uh, economic disadvantage that's already there or not. However, Vultures, with a lot of mines moving out, the Overlord on the corner is there to spot it. Some Scourge are out there to go ahead and try to snipe those Valkyries. <coughs> Should they be spotted and given open play? This is kind of where I like to see Burrow on occasion out of his Zerg player. Double Evolution Chamber has been dropped. At least Arson is able to get out on the field. However, the Mutalisks, diving back to the main, going to be able to rapidly chip away at a turret and also get some bonus SCV kills as the Marine, sorry, the Vulture is starting to make their way top right. The Valkyrie is now creening in, but that reduces the count of the Valkyries to one. The Mutalisks have not been replenished. They're exiting. Lurker is not quite in position to stop the Vultures from slipping through the lines, able to sneak through between shots, but assault, uh, damaged enough where they take out a drone or two, but the drone's able to defend themselves and wipe out that fleet. So solid defense thus far from Nimpo. There are, there's a good amount of mine coverage out. I do like vultures on this map. I think I've mentioned that multiple times. However, Nimpo moving into the late stages here has a huge economic advantage. He's got that hive tech up. He can go ahead and probably drop an ultralist cavern and not worry so much about a defiler mound because he's not dealing with medic marine here. Although it would be a bonus. The lingering mutalisks making their way in. It looks like they are going to get cleaned up, spot everything, spotting the three factories before getting cleaned up. Still, Nimpo only 10 supply behind and two workers ahead. A lot of mines out here. Overlord speed is going to be necessary to go clear that. And they don't see that upgrade, so it could be a challenge for Nimpo at this stage to get out on the map. Right now he's playing it more like a stereotypical Terran versus Zerg, where he's shelling up and waiting for that additional tech. Two additional hatcheries being planted out of the map, where, where right now, Nidus Canal also constructing a lot of macro hatches, actually, from Nimpo. So shelling up. It is two base versus four shortly here. But as siege tanks and more vultures start to grow in number, and also there's backstab opportunity, and a lack of both Ultralisks and Defilers and potentially some mines out on the ground. Arson, I'm going to say, is not out of it. He's got a decent supply lead here. He's starting to work on the eggs to go ahead and get a, a rear attack to clear out that top right base. Might be able to shut down both bases with this forward attack force. Lurker is kind of scooting, checking the wrong location. I'm, it's unfortunate that they didn't check the other side. So the Vulture is able to scoot in and not a lot of defenses here on point, so Nimpo going to end up losing nearly everything in the form of workers, retreating his drones into the Nidus Canal. Hydralis now popping out, should be able to take care of the Vultures, but decent amount of economic damage there, and a command center being floated out to the 9 o'clock location. With the Mutalists no longer in the air, actually, it might be worthwhile to go ahead and take down the Assimilators and make that kind of a protected location. Right now, Nimpo cannot walk freely out on the map because there's a huge minefield all over the place. Although Arson may have done him a little bit of a latent favor where he's kind of connected a degree of the middle expansion, so it's possible that Nimpo could just take that right-hand side. More vultures streaming out. It looks like they want to take another shot top right or at least get some mines in the way. And so actually Arson with a nice recovery, all of a sudden he's got the supply lead. He's got the SCVs starting to saturate the nine o'clock. It's three bases versus four granted. The Vulture's again able to sneak through. Gonna attack some additional kills. 
One problem for Austin right the second though was is with the mech switch, the upgrades look like they are going to be lagging. As Nimpo is at plus one weapons, plus one armor. <coughs> Some lurkers look like they also, they've eaten a mine hit, but it looks like they also want to try to sneak in and maybe take a shot at that nine o'clock. Nimpo still playing very, very defensively at this stage. He does have Overlord speed. Still hasn't, looks like he wants to just play it Hydra. I'm looking for like a Hydra Plague combo here, but no Defiler Mound still. And just holding short, supply count's just about even, which usually puts Zerg in a good position. Lurker's waiting for their opportunity maybe to break through the 9 o'clock, but Arsa now making moves with a large amount of siege tanks with plus one weapons, and I believe plus one armor. It's got a ways to go, actually. I take that back. I was thinking it was going to be finished fairly rapidly here. But a lot of mines planted, and he might be able to just walk up and... So he's cleared the eggs to go ahead and grab his 6 o'clock, and he might even be able to take those siege tanks... Clear out and go to another location. SCVs watching those lurkers from the opposite side. Arson, uh, so Nimpo with the economic lead, but I, he's not really turning it into a tech lead as far as I can tell. He's got a little bit of upgrade rolling for him. He's mostly dropped a lot of macro hatcheries and going queens. I take it back. So gonna go for the queen counter to the mech play now that he's recognized it, but I feel like it might be a little bit too late at this stage. Looking for Arson to make an attack somewhere out on the map. Hyperlisk's finally clearing the mines. The Queens... Usually if you get Queens out and you get a sufficient amount of energy to do the continuous spawn broodling, it is a solid sort of play, but... Feels like the Queens have just come out so late that they're just now starting to build that energy. And Arson's already starting to move. However, I will say with this, the window for Arson is... He's got a timer now. That's kind of the nature of mech with Terran, is, is they're so expensive and so heavy. Once you have a big brutal attack force, you need to utilize it as well. So starting to move up. Sieging up near the natural. Few tanks siege right there. The overlords are there to spot it. And this is again, so the queen's retreating. Again, they need to pull back and buy some time. 150 is the number they're looking for. And it's going to be a while. And there's siege tanks just waiting near... Near the natural, there are Hydralists looking to engage from the north, but there's plenty of mines right there, and this is a lot of mech, and some medic marines grouping in as well. Arson needs to hurry up, though. Queen's starting to get a little bit antsy, and this will be sufficient queens to completely decimate the siege tank army if Arson just plays th this slow. Big supply lead for Nimpo right this second. The siege tanks, I think, are sufficient to go ahead and equalize it based on the troop composition. And I think Arson's just moving too slowly. He's got the army to make it happen, but... <coughs> and even the composition, but now... The queens are a few seconds away from having... The tech they need to go ahead and wipe Arson's mech army out, and that's very expensive. So Arson grabbing the 6 o'clock location... The initial queens that were constructed, I'm not sure if Nimpo has a, a good tag on them. It looks like I think he does. Starting to stage them up. Some Goliaths coming in, but the range on those queens is massive. So Arson just now creating a bit of a a barrier seal, but I guess I thought Nimpo built those too late, but apparently he built them right in the nick of time. Because now Brood War, now the spawn broodling potentially loaded. It looks like he's still backing them out. Maybe I have the energy cost. I thought it was 150. Potential overlords moving up to go for some drops as well. Arson moving in, still not threatening the natural expansion. Huge supply lead. No, he's just moving them to get in location to, to do the drop. So overlords moving in to absorb the initial Goliath hits and provide some distraction. And now, bye-bye siege tanks in mass. Also to spot. Two queens die. The rest are able to scatter. This is forcing the medic marines to chase the rest of this army. They're getting too far forward into the hydralisks. However, the siege tanks still able and insufficient numbers to go ahead and obliterate that, but a follow-up attack force out flooding out of the natural expansion, appropriate color of blue, as Nimpo able to clean up a lot of this mech, and he can probably follow this up with some Zerglings and Adrenal upgrades to go ahead and clear out what's left. 
Two siege tanks remain, completely wiped out that army. More reinforcements moving up from Arson. Arson does need to press the issue here, otherwise he's just going to get out macroed. Hydro's blood on the ground trying to reestablish that siege tank line. This is where just a group of Zerglings actually might be sufficient, particularly with, uh, with sufficient uh, carapace. Overlords, ooh, scouting things across. They're going to eat a lot of damage. That's actually a lot of resources to lose. Let's see if that Valkyrie gets wiped out. Enough Hydralis able to just push through 20 supply lead. However, I do worry about this Valkyrie just running rampant. Between point A and point B, Hydralis making sure mid-map they're just at A moving through these mines. Few of them losing their lives. Doesn't matter that Valkyrie dying on retreat. <coughs> Arson now at risk of being contained. As Nimpo with a 30 supply lead. Again, still mostly in Hydralis. So as long as the siege tank count stays sufficient... Still might be able to repel this, but keep in mind you also have those queens that are potentially building energy in the background. Look how easily those siege tanks just shred those hydralis lines, I will say. Looking for more zerglings to be part of this composition. Now the zerglings being added in by Nimpo. Curious what happened to that queen fleet. I don't think all of them got wiped out. Main, by the way, is uh, empty for Nimpo. There it is. Looking to reposition. This is the secondary problem. I, yeah, they have... Do they have enough energy? Secondary problem with Queens is just having sufficient energy to make it happen. Nimpo, uh... Having some trouble against the second wave of Arson now. Upgrades have kicked in. Level 2 weapons, level 2 armor, which means they hit pretty hard even against... Even troops like this. More Hydralis moving forward. And Arson again, looks like he might close the noose. He's trying to bring some troops to the north so he can turn this into a two-pronged attack and Overlord moving forward to try to spot the siege tank count and maybe provide some vision for the Queen army to move in. SCV is being transferred to the six o'clock location as the main mined out. Nimpo in the red actually, upon some of the Overlord losses he suffered. Now starting to stream this army, and this is going to be a big battle. Hydralis from all directions. The Queen's pressing in as well. Siege tanks very quickly annihilated, and that is going to be it for Arson's front line. More siege tanks moving up. It looks like some Queens are losing their lives for the effort, but there's still additional Queens remaining. But you can see with the heavy upgrades, the Hydralis just don't seem up to the initial challenge here. Arson's still at a pure bulk of Nimpo's army having to retreat. But Nimpo doesn't have enough to really push through. He does have a much stronger base count to work with right this second, though. Tank sieging up. So the Hydra's cleared out. Three o'clock base not yet saturated for Nimpo. Top right is saturated. Natural expansion saturated pretty well. He needs to actually get that three o'clock saturated rapidly. Maybe to stay in this. It looks like some Hydra's have burst through. It looks like they took down a Vespin Geyser alongside them, so reinforcements can't get there. A siege tank actually dealing with the Hydralis from the opposite side. Let's see if the SCVs also defend themselves. Nimpo not present enough to keep the current defenses there. I'm wondering if he's going to open up the Zerg eggs to take another shot here. Also, if he can get that command center low. Keep in mind, those queens can very rapidly deal with that. Arson at even supply at this stage. Comps adding a lot to make sure he can deal with these Lurkers. Lurkers getting a massive amount of splash on those siege tanks, but still not sufficient troops to break through Arson's line. Nimpo taking the 12 o'clock. Looks like he's finally saturated that 3 o'clock. No additional bases for Arson yet, and he's looking thin at his 9 o'clock expansion. His natural expansion is nearly gone, and he's basically only mining here at the 6. Which means he's going to be greatly stymied because mech is expensive. However, Nimpo has more or less been just handing him shovelfuls of overlords and hydralisks to get pretty solid exchanges overall. Haven't seen, I don't know if there's been an upgrade to drop that I've missed in the meantime, but it's still hydralisk dedication from Nimpo with uh, no swarm support, no zergling, mix in... Uh, 
I don't know if the queens are, it looks like the queens are still around. Building up a little bit of additional energy. <clears throat> At this stage, again, this has kind of been the story this entire match. Renimpo has the economic lead, but I don't know that he necessarily has the unit composition lead. 12 o'clock base up and running. SE starting to distance mine in the upper left-hand corner. A secondary problem for Arson is that mech is very, very slow. And can't be everywhere at once. And so when you have a large map like this and you're trying to defend Caddy Corner, upper left and the 6 o'clock location, it can be very, very challenging. A Mutalist tech switch from Nimpo. Very intelligent. Focus firing a lot of the siege tanks down, not bothering with the Goliaths. The Goliaths, as a result, look like they're going to be able to shred the Mutalist attack force, but able to wipe out a good amount of siege tanks. And I can just... Honestly, I want to say that you can see that Nimpo's just not accustomed to dealing with the mech style. Feels like he's floundering a bit in as far as uh, how to respond to this. Base being constructed upper left-hand corner for Arson. If you can get that online, that would be a big boon. Hydel is now starting to move out. Siege tanks lined waiting. Some queens waiting as well. Additional queens able to clear out a lot of those siege tanks, and the Hydralis just swarming through. So Nimpo's economy just being overwhelming. And it looks like the, that is wide enough for the Hydralis, but not the siege tanks or the Goliaths to get through. There's still some siege tanks to the high ground. But if the Hydra, if the Hydralis position themselves and just hug that left-hand edge, they should be able to get this command center into the red, maybe move in one of those leftover queens, Stymie that 6 o'clock, and that could be a game-winning maneuver for Nimpo. A lot of SCVs getting wiped out. It looks like they're premeditatedly maybe trying to go for a group repair. It looks like a couple Hydralists have found that upper left-hand corner as well. But yeah, that command center. And you can see the SCVs group repairing, recognizing that queen threat. Some siege tanks on the opposite end, not able to join in with the attack force. The Hydralists have been wiped out. Some overlords making their way top left, again without anything loaded, so we know they're not drop capable. And Nimpo donating some more troops, it looks like, to Arson's reinforcement lines. The Hydralists with level 3 weapons upgrade look like they are able to do some sufficient damage, but the siege tank, that's still three siege tanks that uh, are standing. So Nimpo, despite having a larger economy, I don't know that he's getting better trades versus Arson which is allowing Arson to go a long distance, honestly, off two bases versus uh, four, essentially. Nimpo still with, I would argue, map control because of the slowness, but Arson is setting up where he could seal in top left and do something looking like a cross-map split. And because Nimpo's just been tossing large clumps of Hydralisks at Arson and having them bleed off to the siege tank lines... <clears throat> that might be sufficient. However, a large grouping of Hydralists now moving to the top left. Some vultures are swarming up to maybe provide some support. And yeah, there's enough uh, clutter in the form of turrets that it's stymieing them a little bit, but they're able to go ahead and get all the way in. Secondary grouping of siege tanks moving up, but that's not going to rescue a lot of the SCVs that are waiting. Tanks seizing short to go ahead and cut off reinforcements should they make their way to the upper left. Focus fire on that command center with level 3 weapons going to wipe that out. And with that, I believe Nimpo might have taken the match as he swung Arson down to a single base. He's still got the supply lead. The 6 o'clock base is looking very, very thin. Another command center being reconstructed, but you really need a lot of gas and a lot of minerals to run the mech style. And Nimpo's still sailing. He hasn't capped the gas at the 12 o'clock, but really hasn't... Well, maybe he needs to because he's looking at the gas uh, ratios. More Hydro is taking the field, however. And again, looks like he's potentially going to lose another grouping of Hydro's, but the Queen's sweeping in to go ahead and wipe out what's left. And Arson, at this stage, does not have the raw resources to replenish this army where Nimpo clearly does, and you can just see in the mineral count there, Arson's really limping in the resources, trying to distance mine with those SCVs. So 
some hydralisks once again going to try to breach the six o'clock there is a single siege tank there and arsons well it's i'm going to call it his last effective mining base for a few seconds here but gonna call gg because he's getting swarmed so nimpo with an aggressive hammering style able to take the game in advance to the winner's match hope you guys enjoyed that one a slog back and forth kind of fun to watch though if you guys enjoyed it please give a like and subscribe as always thank you very much for listening